Every year, sportscasters rip these brackets up. I'm going to laminate, frame, and put this thing in a bulletproof case. I just wanted you to see this sweatshirt. <laughs> Cut off sleeves. Let's be honest, Penn State had a lot more to lose than they had to gain in a game like this. Yeah, Greg, it is Los Angeles, home of Hollywood, home of movies like Chinatown, Sunset Boulevard, Beverly Hills Cop. Hector Neris pitching with a three-run lead. Now, he's supposed to be the good reliever. Let's just sit back and watch this, shall we? It's, it's an athletic <laughs> endeavor, this the sports cast. If you hadn't said anything, no one would have noticed. I thought it would be nice to kind of reveal the curtain a little Transparency. bit. Transparency. ABC 27 Sports coming to you live from the Harrisburg Mile. We're about a little, little less than an hour from race time, so I figured I'd give you a little warm up here. I'm ready. Are you ready, Greg? The Ducks trying to make the Final Four for the first time since 1939. I was 12 then. Dylan Brooks says, that doesn't add up. Add up these images and you've got your story. Victory and defeat. This isn't a vacation. But for Braden Wills, it's a place to sleep. It's just like, instead of waking up in the morning and going downstairs and seeing my mom, like I have to do everything I need to do alone just in my room and then right before I go to school, I just walk into my mom's room and just say hi to her. It's different, it's different. You know, it's not home. It's not, you know, what you're typically used to saying when you're going home. Yes, he lives at a hotel. Right now, that's just part of the routine. It's just not really like a complicated, complicated day. It's just straightforward every day, especially during wrestling season. Yeah, looks good. Wake up, work out, school, practice. My goal is ultimately to be a state champion. It's routine now because one day it wasn't. Smoke and flames did some serious damage to a home in Mechanicsburg. A family and several pets did make it out safely, but the family lost almost everything, including Christmas presents. Braden's house caught fire less than a month before Christmas. I have a little brother and little sister, so like my biggest concern was that they won't be in a house for Christmas or they won't get like, like Santa won't come for Christmas. It was more not about the things, but the meaning behind each gift that I had purchased for the people that I love. So that was tough. Things can be replaced. People can't. Something Braden's family thought they already knew. Um, and it was shortly before the fire that I had my last treatments. Holly was diagnosed with esophageal cancer in September. Like the first thing she told me that there was a chance of it being cancer. And I kind of just pushed it off to the side, not really worrying about it as much, hoping that it wasn't like, and then, uh, and then when she found out it was, it was kind of a shock, but my mom's strong and I knew she should get, she could get through it. He handled it very well, very well. Yeah, I think he, he's a positive thinker, you know, cause I was the same way. It's, it's not a big deal. It's just something we're going to go through right now and it'll be fine. And I think he felt the same way. You beat cancer, then your house, goes up in flames. Come on, Brayden! Brayden isn't the only hero in this story. Clearly, there are two. It's your choice how you look at things like that, and I think that's the only way to look at it. You know, you head first into it and plow through and then be done with it. Now this family has two goals left. The house and the metal. After everything they've been through, maybe, just maybe, they'll get both. It'd be nice to be able to put a medal from the, from states into my room as one of my first ornaments on the wall. So, not really sure how to compare those, but I'd say they're pretty even. He's had a great season. He's had a great career. I mean, he really has, and it's, it's this year has been very good. I mean, not to sound cliche, but you can you can be anything you want to put your mind towards. So. It's just kind of a constant reminder of, like, you can do anything. So there are road trips, and then there are road trips. This week, the Bears travel to St. John's, Canada for the last time. It's a journey they won't soon forget. It starts in Harrisburg, then Toronto, and finally, 
Newfoundland, Canada. After a flight like that, you want to win. <laughs> Bears trying to hold on to that fourth playoff spot. Doing their damage in the first. Tyler Lewington ripping from the point. That tied it at one. Then check out the stretch pass here. Off the boards to Travis Boyd. He rips home the goal. And the Bears would go up by as much as 3-1 in this one. But after that, it's all ice caps. Third period, Keegan Lowe. The winner with just 15 seconds left. Bears get one more chance at a souvenir on this trip tomorrow afternoon at 4. And Penn State moved closer to a frozen four berth with a 10-3 win over Union. They'll face top-seeded Denver in the Midwest Regional Final tomorrow at 6. City Islanders opener in so Richmond, Virginia. The Here's the only goal. The Hint, Harrisburg did not score it. Connor Shinoski scores in front of a record crowd, 8,000 people. Imagine if we got that here, Harrisburg. Penalty kick does not go as City falls in their opener, one to nothing. Well, on a day like today, you can almost feel it. Baseball season, it's just in the air. I mean, take a look at this grass. If this doesn't get you excited, I don't know what will. The Harrisburg Senators holding Fan Fest this afternoon. Everybody's excited here. The home opener is right around the corner on April 6th. Got a couple young prospects warming up the arm. Regular Lucas Giolito over there. A look at that girl working her coloring book. Always important. Got to, got to keep score. An important skill as well. Here's an important skill. Getting the field ready. They say it's ready to go. Yeah, you just don't know how, how fast it's going to take. You come out here and you realize it's the middle of March. You know how much we have to do outside. And, and by God, it really did melt pretty quickly. I mean, there's really very little snow left on the island. Maybe some of the piles in the, in the parking lot. But yeah, we're ready to go. We're not quite ready to go. But give us a week and a half, we'll be ready to go. So the takeaway, almost ready to go. Ready to face Altoona at FNB Field, 7 o'clock on April 6th. Well, we've seen basketball, wrestling, and state swimming championships. Now for the most graceful of high school sports, diving. Here are the 24 top divers in the state competing for gold at Bucknell University. First up, Boiling Springs sophomore, Jack Still. He'd finish 15th. And here's Trinity's heir apparent to Bradley Buchter, junior Riley Spar. Big shoes to fill. Buchter wants four straight golds. And here's this year's favorite, Big Springs' Dylan Novak. Great program over there, and I don't know diving, but I know this is good. Over 100 points better than second place, Dylan Novak easily takes gold. The girls' AA diving championships kicked off the afternoon at Bucknell. West York's Erica Sarver and Big Springs' Shannon McCabe enter the round first and second. And this is clearly not a sport for those of fear of heights. First dive for Sarver, judges watching. I'm terrified personally to do flips off the diving board. I just dive and I kind of land on my stomach, it's awkward. That was not awkward, that was beautiful. Total of 4.58 and there's McCabe. That's her best dive. Good enough for second place. She takes silver and Sarver wins gold. Um, it just shows that my diving has gotten better each year, not like stayed the same. So I love to see that improvement and I hope that's how it is as I continue my career into college as well. So really cool sport. So is the diving season now in the books? How about basketball? Well, Redding, Pine Richland in the 6th A state championship. Miami recruit Lonnie Walker drawing a record crowd, over 9,000 people. End of the third, it's the Lonnie Walker show. Now this is the kind of kid you'll see next March Madness. Honestly, maybe someday the NBA, Redding, wins its first state title, 64 to 57. Oregon, Kansas now. The Ducks trying to make the Final Four for the first time since 1939. I was 12 then. Dylan Brooks says, that doesn't add up. Add up these images and you've got your story. Victory and defeat. Oregon onto the Final Four, 74 to 60. Elite Eight, Xavier and Gonzaga. Xavier coming off that huge win over Arizona. But, you know, the clock struck midnight, all that Cinderella stuff. Beauty and the Beast is in theaters now. That's irrelevant. <laughs> Nigel Williams, Goss and company, not to be denied tonight. Gonzaga is on to their first Final Four, 
to 59. We'll know the full Final Four tomorrow, and my bracket is really toast. I believe I only have North Carolina left alive. You know how to speak my language because you worked Disney princesses into your sports highlights. Yes, of so course. So I really appreciate you putting that in. Uh, yeah, beyond terms those I can generally understand. being considered girls' <laughs> movies, they are well-written stories. They're just good movies for yeah, everyone. Good movies. I think they're making a Little for Mermaid. Boys and girls. A little Mermaid into a. Yeah, there are so many coming up. Well, on that very sportsy note. Yeah, yeah. We got on top. <laughs> we'll of that. be right back. <laughs>